Hello everyone and welcome back again to First Doma PW meeting. Gosh, isn't it hard to believe we're in February already and we're still in lockdown. Thank you anyway for continuing to listen to our monthly get together. This month I have prepared a reflection called What is Your Vote? But first of all I'm going to read from the Bible. I'm going to read Matthew chapter 14 reading verses 22 to 33. And this passage follows on from Jesus um, feeding the 5,000. Jesus walks on the water. Immediately Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side, while he dismissed the crowd. After he dismissed them, he went up into the hills by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone, but the boat was already a considerable distance from land buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, Tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat and walked on the water to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. Now, what is your boat? That is my talk for today. The account of Jesus walking on water is recorded three times by Matthew, Mark and John. But Matthew's account was a bit more detailed. The disciples went out fishing one night, not knowing there was going to be a storm. It was unexpected and terrifying, especially when they saw someone walking on the water towards them. Jesus recognised their fear and told them not to be afraid. Yeah, right. How many times have people told you not to worry? Indeed, Jesus tells us often not to worry, but we still do. We worry about catching coronavirus. We worry about our elderly parents, our children having enough money to feed the family, etc, etc. But then there was Peter, brave Peter, who asked Jesus to command him to walk to him in the water. Who are we to command things of God? Peter failed. Why? We are taught here that if we are not actually called by God, don't do it. A story is told about a man entering heaven he told the story about how he saw a woman being threatened by a group of teenagers. He got angry and started to fight with them. He was asked, when did this happen? He replied, 30 seconds ago. This might be a funny story, but it tells us that we need to know the difference between God's voice and our own impulses and stupidity. It also tells us that while we're in the boat safe and secure, Maybe we should just stay there, but sometimes God calls us to step out of our comfort zone. Step out in faith and achieve things. But the boat seems safe and comfortable, so why not just stay there? But God wants us to step out in faith and accomplish things. I ask, what is your boat? Your boat is anything that stops you from getting out of your comfort zone. Our journey through life will have storms and setbacks. It's what we should expect. We probably all have been having difficulties this past year. I'm sure you all know the saying, feel the fear and do it anyway. To grow in our spiritual journey, we should accept new challenges. When Peter was certain it was Jesus who was calling him, he left the security of the boat and trusted in God's power, but then he saw the strong winds and the waves and he was terrified. He shouted to God to save him. He was focusing on the storm instead of focusing on God. We all experience storms and troubles in our lives and setbacks. 
We will have many trials in life, just like Jesus did, so we ought to expect them. It is through new challenges that we grow in our faith, but every time you leave your boat, you're likely to do it again. You have less fears, but if you stay in the boat, eventually you won't hear God calling you. Staying in the boat won't guarantee your safety, so let fear lose its hold on you. Just because you sink doesn't mean you're sunk. Failing doesn't make you a failure, but quitting does. Although Peter didn't have enough trust, he experienced the euphoria of walking on water and knew he had been empowered by God to do what he couldn't do by himself. He knew that if he sank, God was there to save him from drowning. He had a special connection with Jesus that the others didn't have because they never left the boat. You can only develop deep faith when you're willing to leave security and step out with him. Maybe your life has been going great and you're thinking you are in control. But then God comes along and shakes your world. He does this not just to test your faith, but to strengthen it. When you leave your boat, two things will happen. You will fail, but note, you will not be alone. God will be with you. And secondly, when you leave your boat, your faith will grow stronger and allow you to do greater things. So to summarise, this story teaches us that if God doesn't call us to do something, don't do it. We must get out of our comfort zone. Feel the fear and do it regardless. Failing doesn't make you a failure, quitting does. Once you walk in the water, you are never the same again. Stepping out of the boat is the only way to develop your faith. No matter where you are in your walk with Jesus, keep your eyes and ears on him and you will be okay. When you step out of the boat, you will fail, but you won't be alone and it will strengthen you to do greater things. If you were listening in last month, you'll remember we had Priscilla Reid talking to us. Priscilla not only is a preacher, but a poet. And she's just produced a book of poems called Love the Thread, Poems from My Heart to Yours. And this book is available if you want to purchase it from paulpriscillareid.com and it costs £10 plus postage. And I'm now going to read one of her poems and it's called Unbelief. A child's voice rings sweet and true, complexity hidden, simplicity embraced. So high, so deep, so wide. Pure notes of deep theology. My adult mind is prone to question. The sky darkens with ominous clouds. Solid ground becomes a murky swamp. Life threatens on every side. But let the notes once resonate. A moment to breathe in the darkness. The thunder silenced by rustling feathers. Strong arms hold fast my sinking form. Cheek leans against the tar's rough granite. And I am safe, so high, so deep, so wide. Undaunted, untouched by unbelief, the child sings on. My faltering voice is raised to join the chorus. And now we will close the prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for technology which allows us to meet together, to worship, to read your word, to pray. Help us, Lord, to see how we can step out of our boat, how we can grow and mature, to grow in patience, to offer forgiveness or encouragement, to be kinder to others. Open our eyes and our hearts to do whatever you want us to do. Forgive us in being hesitant about doing your will. Help us to actively seek opportunities to care for others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we will meet again, um, hopefully all been well, on Tuesday the 9th of March at 8pm. This time last year my brother from Canada spoke at our meeting in March and it turned out to be the last one we have had. Well, he's agreed to speak again at our meeting, virtually of course. So we look forward to that. So bye for now. Keep safe.